Plant tissue culture is the culture and maintenance of plant cells or organs in sterile, nutritionally and environmentally supportive conditions. It has applications in research and commerce. In commercial settings, tissue culture is primarily used for plant propagation and is often referred to as micropropagation. Micropropagation refers to the production of whole plants from cell cultures derived from explants, the initial piece of tissue put into culture, the explants usually consist of tissues that contain or develop into meristem cells. However the plasticity and totipotency are central to understanding plant cell culture and regeneration. History of Plant Tissue Culture Gottlieb Haberland, a German scientist, recognized as the father of plant tissue culture. He proposed the theoretical basis for plant tissue culture based on his experiments on the culture of single cells on an artificial medium in 1902. From there, he predicted that one could successfully cultivate artificial embryos from vegetative cells, thus clearly established the concept of totipotency. Gotharet, 1934, obtained the first true plant tissue cultures from cambial tissue of Acer pseudoplatangus. Discovered the function of auxin as plant growth regulator and importance of vitamin B in plant growth. Subsequently, from 1940s to 1960s, there was extensive development of new techniques and improvement of those that were already in use. The 1990s and early 21st century saw continued expansion in the application of the in vitro technologies to an increasing number of plant species including cereals and grasses, legumes, vegetable crops, potato and other root and tuber crops, oil seeds, temperate and tropical fruits, plantation crops, forest trees, and, of course, ornamentals. After the knowing the introduction of the plant tissue culture, let's us move to the next stage, which is the experimental part of the plant tissue culture. Firstly, we need to prepare the plant tissue culture material. Remember all the material need to be prepared fresh and sterile. This is the list of the medium to be prepared. Consisted of micro and macronutrients. Therefore before prepare all the material, we need to find it from the stock. Prepare beaker for preparation of the stock solution. Then, weight correctly the amount of all the chemical. Dissolve it completely with distilled water by using the magnetic stirrer. This is one of the stock solution. Now, all stock solution have been done so we have to take the correct amount of solution into the beaker. Add 2 grams of sucrose and dissolve it completely. Adjust the pH to 5.8 by adding sodium hydroxide or hydrochloric acid, hence after that, bring up the volume to 100 milliliter. 0.9 grams of agar is added and microwave it until the agar is melted. Finally, pour the medium into two bottles. Remember the sterility of the bottle is really crucial at all the time during the media preparation. Before start up the experiment, laminar flow is being set up. Personal safety is highly recommended for this experiment. Wearing the personal protective equipment. Before move the materials into the hood. Surface sterilization. Include the steps of First, decant the water and add 95% ethanol and soak it for 3 minutes. During the soaking process, the epi tubes is constantly shakes to maximize the process. Remember to keep the aseptic technique at all times. Secondly, decant the ethanol and add the 20% Clorox bleach with a few drops of tween 20. and soak it for 10 minutes exactly with a constant shaking. Rinse the seeds five times with autoclave distilled water.
Next, decant the water and the seeds are left to dry for a while in the laminar airflow. The seeds are then ready for in vitro culture. Remember the seeds need to be dry properly before doing the in vitro culture. By using the aseptic technique as demonstrated in the video, three seeds each are then inoculated into a conical flask containing half MSO, which is in total of six seeds in two bottles. Label the conical flask carefully and properly. The conical flask then are kept in 16 hours in light condition and 8 hours in dark condition for germination. Lastly, a weekly report of the observation of the cultures is taken, WH will include the percentage of contamination and the germination rate of the explant for a duration of 4 weeks. Hardening Hardening process including First, remove the plantlet or shoot culture from the flask and take it are carefully. Please take note to not hurt the roots. Other than that, need to remember to add some water into the bottle to soften the agar. Secondly the palantlet obtained is then clean and washed under the flowing water for a few minutes, this is to remove the media which still attached to the plantlet. Then poke the aluminium foil with the stick, and cover the bottom of the pot. Add the soil into the pot. Make the soil wet by using water sprayer, remember to not overspray the soil. Thirdly, the plantlets are then transferred to the flower pot containing light soil which already wetted with water. And it's placed in the shed environment. A clear plastic bags is then used to cover the plantlet. Remember to make a holes on the plastic bag and little water is sprayed onto it. To create a humid environment for the plantlets. Lastly, the plant is watered daily, at the same time, the morphology and growth of the plants, all are observed for any abnormal characteristic. The observation is done for a duration of 4 weeks. Plant tissue culture is a technique to produce useful products for human needs. Especially when human populations are in the increasing and lead to hunger issue whereby now plant tissue culture plays an important role to solve this problem. There are many examples of plant tissue culture products such as
Thus, it is the social responsibilities to ensure that the plant tissue culture is performed in caution. Now, we are talking about the market opportunity of the micropropagated plants. In this 21st century, micropropagated plants may give a lot of advantages to both the plant breeder and the consumers. The reasons behind this because, by using this plant tissue culture technique or also known as the micropropagation, producers, farmers and nursery owners for high quality planting vegetables by adapting low cost production. It also might lower the price of the product. This low cost production are include. Optimal use of equipment. Efficiency utilization of resources. Selecting plants that provide the option for around a year production. Having sufficient mother culture to reduce the number of subculture to avoid variation. However, there are some marketing strategies are being used to market this micropropagated plant, for example in this experiment we are using the tomato plants. Product strategy. The micropropagated plants is GMO free, or also known as genetically modified organism. There is no major ethical issue being involved in this micropropagated plants. Other than that, Malaysia is one of the country who exported the tomatoes to other countries such as Singapore. The statistics showed that the self-sufficiency ratio of tomato in Malaysia is getting lesser start from year 2010, and is anticipated to have inconsistent production of tomato due to climate change such as low rainfall and increasing of global temperature. Micropropagation of tomatoes could be an alternative is increasing the production of tomatoes. Place strategy. The targeted place to distribute the micropropagated tomato is Singapore. According to Department of Statistics Malaysia, Malaysia being one of the country exported the tomato to Singapore. Promotional strategy. By using the motto GMO free and basic education to people regarding micropropagated plants, it will help to enrich the knowledge of the consumer. Price strategy. When the plants is operated under the low cost budget it will reduce the price of the product significantly. Hence the consumer can buy the crops with the efficient price. Other than that, in the real world, the fact about the micropropagation being used in the business shown in South Africa, where they develop efficient and competitive plant biotechnology sector in their country. However there are still many kalanjis covering the micropropagation, such as the technique the demographic of the place, and also the geographical situation of the country. In addition, the micropropagation also being implemented to produce the biofuel, lower cost of production of biofuel and also to increase the production efficiency of the biofuel plants itself. Another example use of plant tissue culture technique is in the production of secondary metabolites of the plants. It might help to produce the secondary metabolites without the presence of the whole plants. Example for the secondary metabolites being produced is Shikanan. Thanks for staying tuned with us, we hope to see you again in the other movie.